In the previous two episodes, we considered this model and uh, solved it graphically. In the first of the two, we solved it as, as you can see it here, and the feasible region was this blue line. And in the second episode, we considered uh, that some constraints were turned into equalities. So when constraint 3 became equality, this was the feasible region, this area uh, here, this segment between points A and B. And, uh, and then when we additionally consider constraint number one, to be equality, only point A was, was feasible. Now what I would like to, uh, to do is uh, consider what would happen if we add integer constraints. So first of all, let's write down what I mean. So let's say I would like to limit my solutions to only those which satisfy constraint x1 and x2 are integer. Right? So first of all, we, we don't have equalities anymore. Again, we have less than or equal, greater than or equal. These constraints are as in the original model before those modifications from the last segment. So right before those modifications, the blue region was the feasible region. But now we're adding this integer constraint, right? this one. OK, so this is new. So what changes? So first of all, what you have to recognize is that we no longer have feasible region fractional feasible solutions, right? So here, for example, point A is actually 2, 1. It is, it is an integer point, right? 2 is integer and 1 is integer, so it satisfies this new constraint. However, uh, there are other points here, like for example, B and C are actually not integer, so they are no longer feasible, right? This one is, but B and C are no longer feasible. But actually, if you look at this area here, there's lots of uh, fractional solutions that will no longer be feasible because they are not integer valued solutions. So what can we do? How can we determine the feasible region? What we need to recognize now is that the blue region is no longer continuous. It, uh, feasible points, feasible region, will be just a set of points, discrete points, that are integer. So for example, so what I'm going to do here, first of all, is I'm going to, to clear this blue area, right? So remember, I still have to be within the old blue area, within this area. However, I also want to have integer solutions. So one point that is that was within this area is this point A. Let's mark it. Right, or maybe I'm going to use this with blue color, some kind of blue. Right, so point A is right, this is 2 and 1, x1 is 2 and 2, x2 is 1. This point is integer feasible. Right, I can, for example, go up to point 2, 2, which will be somewhere here, and this is also integer feasible and clearly within the region. I can go to 2, 3. And I believe I'm still inside. And if I go to here, uh, this is not a feasible solution because it doesn't satisfy constraint 2. So I'm going to erase it, right? I can go somewhere to the right. And now has, one has to be very careful. If I go here to the point 3, 2, it says 3, 1. It is below this constraint. So this is not feasible. But if I go to 3, 2, which is somewhere here, it is feasible. Now, a tricky point is something like 3, 3. 3, 3 looks like it could be just on the line or below, or it could be just above. Which one is the case here, right? Which is the case? Well, we can uh, check. We're considering constraint 2, and we're thinking of a point 3 and 3, right? If we think about point 3 and 3, and considering constraint number 2, Let's test in 3, 3, 3 satisfies this constraint. It's 2 times 3, 2 times x1, plus 5 times x2, x2 is also 3, right? That's easy to calculate, right? That's uh, 6 plus 15, that is 21. No wonder uh, we were not sure, it is very close to the right-hand side value 20, but it is not less than or equal as the constraint requires. So in fact, the case here is that this point, this point here, 
is actually above the line and therefore it is not feasible I should not plot it right this is outside of the line right I can consider four I can go to the right so this is on this on this line on the line on the three value only value three for x2 is satisfying the all the constraints three three if you go more to the right let's see point four four two four two three two and four two so let's see point four two does it still fit well we are now very close to line three so let's check again the constraint number three and see if this point four and two if it satisfies constraint number three right and we can test it we can plug in four minus two times two so that gives us zero and that is less than or equal to zero it's actually equal zero so that means it is exactly on the line this point is on the line of the constraint that is feasible right and that same way we can basically test all points this is a little bit tedious if the region is uh, includes a lot of integer points here there isn't that many we can do this still within this video so so what I would like to do is continue testing those points so I think with four we've already exhausted we've exhausted uh, we cannot go any further to the right right uh, because on five there are no feasible regions constraints two and three will prevent any points with value x15 to be feasible I can still go to the left and I believe 1 2 it is on this line 1 2 why because 1 plus 2 is 3 and that's what we expect here at least 3 3 it does satisfy this constraint I can also go, go to 1 1 2 to 1 3 it's inside and 1 4 it's clearly outside this point will not be feasible and then I can go to 0 3 and 0 4 which happen to be exactly on the lines this one on constraint number one this one and this one on constraint number two right now I can go also remember x1 is not restricted to be greater than or equal to zero x1 can be minus one is there a point here that is integer right on this line well I think on the line four horizontal right uh, for the value x24 this point will exactly be on this constraint again right we can check minus 1 and 4 if you plug it into constraint number 1 right you will get minus 1 plus 4 x1 plus x2 equals 3 and that is satisfying the constraint with actually with equality right so this point is also an integer feasible point so what did we find overall what we found overall is that when we have this new this new constraint oops, when we have this new constraint right when we require variables to be integer the region is no longer continuous here this these points are no longer feasible only those points marked in blue here are feasible points they are discrete points all of them have integer values for x1 and x2 and we can actually count that there is a total of 10 of them and uh, so now our feasible region let's write this feasible region is 10 points right the blue points 10 blue points And blue points right and so uh, of course optimal solution must be selected from among those 10 points so I can now again draw um, take the line right on the line 17 there is no longer feasible uh, there are no longer uh, feasible solutions I have to go back a little bit down right so I'm going to backtrack until I reach the first point and you see this is the point a not a point zero four right this line which right it still crosses this point Oops. this line still crosses 
this point and so this point must be optimal right there is no point above this line and everything else is below this line so optimal solution right optimal solution is 0 4 right x1 0 x2 4 and the value easy to de determine x1 objective value is 0 plus 4 times 4 16 right so notice what we had before when the region was this blue triangle continuous region before this was the value we achieved and this was optimal now with the integer constraint the optimal solution changed uh, right and the value is 16 it became worse uh, not surprisingly when you add constraint when you restrict the value can stay the same or can become only worse it can never become better right so we it lowered it and also what i would like you to see as interesting thing is that we, we if you try to round this solution to an integer value right if you have minus 1.7.67 you could round it to minus 2 or to minus 1 the nearest integers right to this this one right uh, but actually optimal solution has zero here and uh, right so this solution 0 4 which is optimal would you wouldn't be able to reach this solution by rounding the fractional optimal solution point c right uh, another case i want you to consider is what if what if we change this a little bit and we said no 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 not both variables are integer but only x1 let's say is integer what if only x1 is integer right or sorry or let's change it but what if only x2 is integer so i would say this x1 is still a continuous variable and actually i should say x2 is integer what if x2 is integer so now i have to consider that values for x2 must be integer but for x1 they can be still continuous right they can be fractional so what does that change well what it changes is that in fact my feasible region will look like this there will be these points minus one four and zero four but the segment in between them as well is feasible same thing on the level for x2 3 right and then i have to continue to some point here which i don't know the value of then points on the level 2 are here and on the level x21 is just this point still right so when only one variable x2 is integer right i can have to have values for x2 this is 2 this is 3 this is 4 this is 5 values for x2 are have to be integer but for x1 they can be continuous therefore i have continuous lines right limited by the constraints constraints one two and three in this case which are those that are non-redundant right so again i would have to solve choose the optimal solution from among those points and in this case because i chose x2 to be integer and x1 continuous it's still the same point number five sorry point number uh, point, point at coordinates zero four right it's still this point that remains uh, that remains optimal right so this is this is this was considering the case with integer constraints and you see that again the feasible region changes uh, significantly